Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GynoCast. My name is Dr. Eric Hegard, board certified, not certifiable obstetrician gynecologist. Uh, I'm here with Twyla Dang, my boss, my buddy. Hi. Hi. Stop calling it certifiable. <laughs> You're not certifiable. Today, we are going to be talking about vitamins and supplements. And why are we doing this? Well, because uh, people spend a lot of money on this stuff, and for the most part, it doesn't help and it could be dangerous. That's How about not what that? I meant. Oh, why is what? Why are we talking about this today? It's important. I mean, it is, but it's also because we're on a break. Oh. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, just really quickly. Oh, I keep forgetting. Yeah, the Twilight housekeeping. And I are meditating. Yeah, we're on a we break right ass. now. Um, we're actually hard at work on a new season. Um, and in the meantime, we wanted to make sure that we didn't leave you with anything good. So we're taking some time to talk about things that we don't normally get to and talking about them in a little detail. Uh, we may expand on some of these later, but That's right. for now, we wanted to make sure that we're sort of always providing value. And thank you for commenting on the fact that I got to the topic. In you did listen. You did. You listen. You rocked that. I feel bad having to interrupt it, but you rocked did you that. Hear, did you ever hear that? I rocked. You that. did. So congrats. Thank you so much. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is a study came out recently in 2018, uh, calling into a uh, question about the advantages of vitamins, vitamin D, calcium, vitamin C, etc., and many others that we all take in bulk in the United States and in the Western world as to whether they help at all. And for the most part, they don't. And there's and this adds on to other studies that have been done in the past that show not only do many of these supplements not help, but sometimes they can actually be dangerous. Wow. I thank well, you for I'm like, sorry. the gas. There's, there's no, I was expecting Twilight. You I was go, waiting <gasps> for you to like launch oh in. God. No, oh I, well, here's, a, wow. here's, well, here's, Seriously? Well, here's why I didn't do that. Because you and I have had a bit of a conversation about this, it's particularly offline before, about um, how terribly ridiculous the supplement industry can be at times mostly because it's not actually regulated it's by not regulated at all yeah it's not regulated by the fda most people assume that supplements that are sold in stores are governed by the same rules and regulations as our medicine or as our food neither of those is true they're not regulated so you can manufacture exactly. Just about anything you want, slap a label on the side, say it's good for X, Y, and Z, and sell it on a shelf. There isn't any check and balances. There's more of a check and balance on the packaging around a supplement yeah, than the actual supplement that goes in your mouth. That's undoubtedly true. And so uh, let me just throw out a figure to you. Okay. $30 billion a year. At least that's a billion of its mind. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And we, that's what we spend in the United States, thirty billion, over $30 billion a year on supplements that – for the most part, have very lit, uh, little uh, support in terms of what they do. Right. And, and actually, if you dig into it, you find out that some of it may be dangerous. Some of it just, frankly, doesn't work. And yet we all, many of us, continue to take them, even though if we really do, were to educate ourselves, we would find that there's no evidence to support it, which goes into a whole other psychological thing that, why do we do this? And the I take I take stuff. It's a placebo effect, isn't it? Yeah, I actually had uh, there's there's a great quote which says it is the most expensive placebo. Uh, vitamin supplements are the, are a powerful placebo. <laughs> That's what they Indeed. are. Indeed, and an expensive one. And so there's data out there to show that a, a, in adults that are over 65, almost 78 percent of us uh, over si over 68 to 70 are taking some sort of supplement. Okay. And when you just look at v adults themselves, you know, 18 and above, over 50%. I mean, we take this stuff like mad. Well, and think about it. We don't just take them, um, like, I would say there's a point in time where we used to just take things because it was sort of told to us that it's good to do. Like, take a, you know, a vitamin a day was like an apple a day, right? right? And right. and even doctors said, you know, that's, you know, low-level supplements or whatever. But over time, as the internet became our best friend and our and Google became our de facto doctor, Mm -hmm. We started doing this thing where we would diagnose ourselves and in a climate where we don't have or not everybody has sufficient health care and um, sufficient um, money to be able to support themselves. If something were to go wrong, we are we have fully become a society that practices self-medication yeah. and and self-diagnosis and then add on to it sort of all these sort of fringe areas where we're trying to medicate happiness and medicate um, you know, conditions like ADHD and we've, and when I'm going to start talking about like anti-vaxxers, but we're all using sort of coming back to this one particular industry and trying to find a catch-all or a fit-all. 
And they've been able to, this industry has been able to exploit that because everybody's afraid. Everybody doesn't, everybody wants to be able to fix something. That's right. And we, if we think there's a way, and especially if we think it's something that's embarrassing or something that's taboo or something that's considered shameful, we will try to find a way to sort of backdoor engineer it so that we don't have to tell anybody these things are wrong with us. That's right. And so this is, uh, th- I'm going to tell you right now what I want the take home points to be from our little conversation. And we okay. can go wherever, wherever we want with us. I'm on it. Um, one is resources. These are places where you can go to educate yourself. This is called doing due diligence. You, we spend $30 billion a year on supplements. We might as well take five seconds to actually get some good education on it. I agree with that. Nutrition.gov. N-U-T-R-I-T-I-O. <laughs> <laughs> nice I try. I think. Is it that is. Right? You're good. .gov. Yep, you're good. And then this is a... In a, a, a division of the National Institute of Health, National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health. So you can just go to the National Institutes of Health and put in uh, complementary medicine or whatever, and you will find this division. And what's great about this is they are there are people that are doing studies on this stuff to try to get good information about what what is what impact these these supplements or uh, herbal additives, vitamins actually do. And so you can go and educate yourself because, you know, some of these things, many of these supplements actually are have real real effects. Absolutely. And now, I should point out, um, as we're having this conversation, I don't want everybody scrambling to try to find paper and pencil. We're going to, even for the mini episodes, we'll have a mini syllabus. So we will have connections and links to all the things we talk about. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and then the other thing is that... Uh, and in, in addition to the uh, nutrition and the, the the websites, to talk about that we should really be getting most of our 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 nutrients from our food, and that's Amen. what it really comes from. You know whether uh, and, and you know we are taking some of these some of the the uh, supplements that people take vitamins etc. are five to ten times what are recommended. Yes. And and that and that's kind of on the low end in some situations. Well, that's true. And uh, and so, you know, we should really our our bodies are incredibly intricate and complex organisms, designed over millions and millions of years to extract what we need from what we eat. Right. And so I think that, and we've talked about this a lot. I think this is you know, a fairly, uh, fairly common conversation in some areas. But you know, we keep trying to medicate our things, as you were just uh, you know the things that are, are causing us health issues, when in fact, when it really comes down to it, lifestyle and diet impact probably in excess of 50%, probably much higher in terms of many of the things that we struggle with in terms of our health. Well, we have to go all go back to the old adage, which is if your grandma didn't pull it out of the ground, yeah, you know, or, or feed it as livestock in the back, before it made it to your table, maybe you shouldn't do it. I mean, yeah. we, we are absolutely a society that is um, based and built and fed around many different extensive forms of food science. That's and right. while those are interesting and fascinating, and I'm certainly not giving up my red vines for you guys tomorrow, um, you your got red what? Red vines. Red vines? Yeah, licorice. Oh, my yeah. God. That's r- is that a type of licorice? Or yeah. Red? It's called red vine. Fun fact. It is a type of licorice that is actually made from a dough. Not from uh, not from like a sugared substance. Really? Yeah. That's which is of course, which is of course why I love it because it's bread. Um, y- but yeah, um, hmm. it's yeah, it's super fascinating. I'll put a link in. Um, but but I mean, just the fact is, over the course of a hundred years, we have shifted from a society that eats sort of farm to table and what's fresh and available to you know shelf stable for years at yeah. a time to. You know, our many of our meat products are sort of oxidized and then packaged up so they stay a certain color longer, so That's that right. they are stable for longer. And while all of these things have provided many, many conveniences for us and many, many abilities for people to have access to things we would never have access to, none of us would know what a banana was like if we didn't have some of these things in place. Um, right. There's still it's still food science, and if you m- if the majority of your diet is made up of additive preservatives and things that prolong the life of a product, what is it doing inside your body over time? That's right. I, we are, I think we're going to look back on, our, on the way we eat and many of the substances that we are exposed to, chemicals and that sort of thing, in the same way that we look back on smoking now. I wouldn't be surprised. Which is, surprised. you know, we look at now, 
I, there's a lot of people who smoke, and frankly, I'll tell you that I love to smoke. I will just tell you that. If you have something that's that's lit and in front of me, I will probably uh, really. I, will probably, I I love don't oh, I love to smoke. It's just wow. It's I just, hated it's, it. I, I mean, I never did it. I mean, I grew up with smokers, but yeah. it's just never. And it I, was I, never I'm just telling my you a weakness. I just love, I love cigars, I almost, cigars yeah, pipes, whatever. I, yeah, when we traveled overseas, that was the hardest part was just everybody does it everywhere, and it's just still very, very common. Yeah. And I had gotten so used to sort of living in our little Twin Cities outpost of, you yeah. know, every, there, there's no smoking anywhere really in Twin Cities anymore. Yeah, you can't, which is good because I, I love to smoke, but I don't smoke. I will, But I'll tell you, if I, you know, if I'm sitting down with a friend and that friend happens to have a cigarette, I will smoke one. And I will wow. enjoy it massively. That is and, something uh, I never would have so expected. This is why I think I'm very good with patients who have uh, weaknesses. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, it's not. A, it's. I mean, it's not. A, it's not a weakness, but it is. An, it's very interesting to be able to know that there's yeah. something that you would indulge in more if you knew it wouldn't harm you. Oh my God! If I knew that smoking was vices or vices, I would exactly. So you know, there's. I will tell you this that I and I'll tell this to my patients that you know I. I don't smoke, but I love to smoke. I will smoke periodically, if, I mean, like I said, but I never buy anything. But, you know, we everybody knows, and even people who smoke habitually know that it is it is horrible for your body. There is not one good thing about smoking, in, at least as far as I can tell. Yeah. And But 50 years ago, my dad, who was a, a, a family doctor, actually an even better than that, a general doctor in a small town, it was, you know, back when they treated animals and humans and you know you know whatever came their way yeah and it was pretty and he, he would go to I, he smoked like a maniac everybody smoked like a maniac they'd wow. go into people would walk around the hospital smoking he would smoke with his patients and i think deep in his heart he knew it was bad and um but you know nobody we all know but it's horrible I mean, it, yeah but it's i mean and like i said a vice is a vice and an addiction is an addiction and what we didn't know then which is what we know now is that they were designed to be addictive i mean it's right. even like and honestly that's a that's an interesting sort of turn back around to this part of the conversation and that um there was a book i read a couple of years ago i think it was called like um sugar fat salt or something mm. and it really talked mm. about the industry mm. the yeah. food industry and how they designed products to to have a stickier of addictive quality yeah. so that you want to come back and eat more of them. Exactly. And Refined sugar, salt, and right. fat. Right. So, so, our, yeah, yeah. so our diet, at some point, our everyday diet that people just ate to live became an industry that could be commodified. And that industry needed to continue to make money That's right. in new and innovative ways. And the m- most innovative way to get you to, to make money is to make sure that the public doesn't just eat out of necessity, but out of compulsion. You know, compulsion. Yeah, yeah. And that's... That's tremendous. I mean, that, that yeah. changes the trajectory of how you live. That's right. And so we are going to look back, and, uh, t- and it's happening now in the next generation. We're going to look back and think, did those people really eat that stuff and think there could be no negative effects? Or right. Well, I mean, it's just like when, it's like, it's like when I hear my mother talk about how she smoked when she was pregnant. And then yeah. we were like, wait, what? Drank and drank. Yeah, we're like, wait, what? She's like, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look <laughs> like, you. She thinks. <laughs> well, who knows? If, you, if your mom hadn't smoked, maybe you would have an IQ of 200. 210 instead of 109 no but i do like to point out that <laughs> I, I do like to point out that all of a sudden my kids have all of these allergies and things like that that don't make any sense well this <laughs> is the thing you know i i wonder I and mean, there's a lot of people who believe that the allergies that we are seeing to many things have to do with what we're eating and what we're being exposed to and yeah you always have to be a little cautious when you start attributing things to things yeah like yeah you can't make correlations that aren't necessarily there and we don't have a lot of scientific proof to back a lot right but you at least and that's how you you study something is something comes to mind you think huh i wonder if there's a relationship and there's enough of this stuff that it makes you kind of wonder and i think we should be wondering very powerfully um so uh again so two things improve our nutrition and improve our activity that is especially nutrition is the way we should be getting our our necessary vitamins and minerals etc Go to those resources I mentioned to get more information. And uh, think to yourself, this, and this is a hard thing in this day and age, is the idea of taking your mind away a little bit and trying to look objectively at things instead of just listening to whatever uh, resource is yelling loudly and loudest at well, us. Well, m- find more than one resource. Don't right. just don't just take. I mean, it's very easy, and I know because I am a I am a quote unquote you know Gen X full you know Facebook mom. Yeah. You're on Facebook, and somebody has somebody that you trust has shared a video with you, and the video says, 
you know, these are 20 ways that vitamin D can help you in your life. Yeah. And then you think, that's I'm going to get some vitamin D. Doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, um, you you don't just go off of somebody's slickly produced video. You don't just necessarily trust the morning show that you watch every morning when when you're and when the don't trust Dr. Oz. OK, the guy's I'm a okay. quack. What did I tell you? You can't just call him a quack. He is a quack. I mean, you don't. Makes it you even can more, just say you really just worse. like his opinion, but I don't want to get sued for libel, so don't All call right. him a quack. Look, he's, he's, forgive me. I'm going to say I disagree with some yeah, of the things. He is a medical. He's a trained medical doctor, but he tends to talk about things on his television show that he was not trained to talk. Who's about. Who's been censored by the medical society? That, and, and which is true. He has been censored. That's fact, not, not no. Conjecture. That is true. So I would say, but I, but you speak to a very specific point, which is we tend to put a lot of our trust in organizations and individuals that we don't actually have a, di- a direct connection with. And the fact that they're in our lives in repetition does not make them experts. It just makes right. happens to make them a person who we see all the time. Exactly. If, if the Precisely. guy, if the you guy, well, listen, if the guy on the highway <laughs> overpass that was holding the sign that said, please give change. Thanks. God bless. Had another sign under it that said, take a thousand milligrams of vitamin D a day. Would you do it? I think taking a thousand International units of vitamin D a day is, is probably good? not a bad idea. Yeah, that's that's actually one but of that's the ones that okay, well, might yeah. actually have okay, some well, value. So, okay, I'm sorry. We'll change that out. Like, if he had a sign that said, take St. John's wort every yeah. day, yeah. would you do it? Like, if you saw him every day on the way to work and you're like, oh, that guy again. No, that's a very good point. Yeah, at, at, at some point, you're, you're not going to get to a point where you see that guy and you go, I'm going to take St. John's wort tomorrow. But we will get to a point where if Dr. Oz or the host of the Today Show or somebody says, you should do this every day. At some point, we will say, "Yeah, I trust them. We'll do this." Yeah, right. I know, I know for a fact, as much as I shouldn't admit it. If Oprah came out tomorrow and yeah. said, um, "You know, girl, you should buy vitamin E tablets and rub them all over your face every night," you know what I would do? Rub them all over my face every night because right. because I might too because the queen has spoken. I might. Actually. I know, and that's and but we have to be we have to become better consumers than that. Be we have to learn cynical. how to yeah we be have cynical. to we have to filter out voices. If that's you're right. really curious about it and it's really something that you that you want to know more about, that's what a nurse line is for. Call your nurse line at your doctor's office. That's right. Next time you're at the doctor for an appointment, put in your put in the notes of your appointment time in your calendar to ask about these things. That's right. And actually get a trained professional to give you an opinion. Like you, like you said just now, like taking 1,000 milligrams of vitamin D is not necessarily a bad thing. That would be something I would find out because I asked yeah. my doctor. Yeah. As opposed to I just decided on a whim because Dr. Oz said to do it, to do it. Yeah, right. Okay. So. We've agreed to agree. Now, yeah. Um, now, I guess I have one question for you. If you get to the point where I would say the, at minimum, if you've done a little bit of due diligence or you've just decided you guys are cracked, I'm taking supplements. Um, should we talk a little bit about where you get them from? Because well, I think that's that one of the biggest is, pieces of the puzzle here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can answer that, frankly. But I, I would. I, guess I, I can think it very, at minimum. I think we can answer it by saying don't get them from big box re- retailers necessarily. Well, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. In, I'm not. In, well, maybe you have information on this that I don't. But I'm not sure whether I would trust any place. Do you remember there was a thing I five think years in, ago? Was in, a study. Was mm-hmm. it in mm-hmm. Consumer Reports that said they went like to a bunch of these? They big went box to all stores. the big box retailers, picked like a variety of. Of vitamins and supplements, so not just one brand, yeah. but like five or six brands, tested them, and like eighty percent of them came back and were not even or were only very small, partially what they said they contained. That's right. Like some of like them, fly yes. wings and yes, sawdust. Yes, some, yeah, yeah, some of them had like sawdust in them. Yeah, it was you were taking things that they, your body would pass them, but it wasn't what you were paying for, and you weren't That's obviously right. going to get a benefit from it because it wasn't the product that it was advertised. That's right. So I would say at the very least, if you're going to get it, if you're going to get these things, you really do need to research, like, where is a safe place to get these things? I would agree with that. I'm not, and I, I wish I could say, again, that I could recommend a place where you could do that. But I think you just, again. By the t- well, here's what I'll say. At some point, we'll probably do a longer, more extended episode about this. And yeah. when we do that, by then, we will have really looked at some resources. And I'll try yeah. to find at least some consumer information to point you to um, probably like consumer reports or something. And I'll put that in the syllabus I love it. to, to at least give people an idea. If you're going to do these things, get them from the safest place yeah. you can. Although s- uh, sawdust actually has insoluble s- fiber, which actually could be good for colon health. As long as it's not sawdust from some pine, you know, and when we get pine. sued because somebody emails me and says, well, Dr. E said sawdust is good. So I was eating that sawdust girl and uh, <laughs> I wound up with an impacted yeah. bowel. Don't listen. To the, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm really like, doggone it. You, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do your, you know, be skeptical, be cynical, even with what we say. True. Yeah. Because I mean, I don't. We know We have mine. I, I told you. I just have a lot of opinions. If you believe <laughs> in God, God, then believe that God gave us minds that allow us to to make 
make decisions. Well, make sound decisions. You're adults. Make That's sound right. decisions. Do your research. Make sound decisions. There's a lot of idiots out there, and every once in a while, you will be one of them. Well, God looks out for babies kids. and fools in equal measure. That's what I tell my kids. There's a lot of idiot, idiots out there, and every once in a while, you will be one. <laughs> exactly. And I will be one. Okay, well, thank you so much for visiting and listening. Sitting with us, Twyla and me, you're basically you're sitting at the table having coffee, a little chatting. There you go. Um, and uh, visit us on the Gynocast website. Yeah, well, uh, go to the Facebook page first. Go to the Gynocast on Facebook. Make sure you're a member. If you're not, go ahead and sign up. It's super easy to do. Just request. We will vet you. We'll lay you in. Um, it is a private group uh, private, because we have sense. private club. Yeah, we, well, it's not a private club. It's just a private group because we have sensitive discussions, and we always want to have those respectfully, and that is a great, safe place to do that. Um, and also, we have a website. Go to matriarchdm.com. Gynopodcast has a page of its own, and you can listen to previous episodes. You can even email the show at hello at matriarchdm.com. Hello. I should have known. Again, hello. Okay, you have like five seconds, and it's costing me money. Thank you for listening to the Gynocast. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.